Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Heart to Heart. My name is Madiha, and here with me today I have our esteemed guest, Sister Masima Jaffer. She is a resident alima at Stanmore Mosque, and she's also got qualifications in counselling. She's counselled hundreds of um, individuals, families, and couples on various issues and topics um, in her time. Um, Heart to Heart is all about you as the viewer. You can email in with your uh, questions, with your issues, with problems that you might be facing at home or at work. And Sister Massimo will try her best to help you tackle these issues in a religious and a practical manner. So thank you so much, Sister Massimo, for coming in today um, and taking time out to, to help um, tackle some of these issues. So we've had loads of people email in and uh, give their questions and um, problems and issues. So I'm just going to uh, go straight to the first one. Um, here I have uh, someone that said, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, reading my problem. Since I was very young, I've always had these feelings of insecurity, especially when I'm in social situations. I keep thinking that people are talking about me or saying things about me when I leave the room. The truth is I've never had much confidence, but recently, since starting university, it's gotten much worse. Should I leave university and get counselling? Should I travel? I just don't know what to do. I don't know if it's uh, male or female, but I, I, it probably doesn't matter in this okay, situation. I think um, the, obviously there's, there's, there's a huge amount of low self-esteem and mm -hmm. self-confidence in this person, um, which could arise from something that's happened in their childhood, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it may be, you know, um, they may, it may be something that someone said to them, something that happened to them, which has made them feel um, less worthy. Um, so I think counselling is is very good because it, if there is some underlining issue there that can then will help resolve that at least they can work on it. Um, it may just be that you know they're, they're introvert and they don't like to be the focal point you know the, the focus in, in, in um, all situations which is fine and sometimes I think as introverts we tend to um, mix the two so we think if you're an introvert you have less confidence and that's not necessarily the case mm -hmm. I, as an introvert I just don't like to be in the limelight mm -hmm. um, I like I'd rather be you know in, in the background and that's fine and, and it's been comfortable with that as well yeah. but this person actually talks about the fact that um, that when they come out of a situation they feel that people are talking about them mm -hmm. it seems like they really care about what other people think of them mm -hmm. and that's that's no way to live your life mm -hmm. um, because you're never going to have everyone on board you're never going to have everyone being happy with you I, yeah. I, you know the, the story of Luqman where he tells his you know he gives that um, example to his son where they're walking in the desert and um, Luqman I think at one point he's um, his son is sitting mm -hmm. on the donkey they've mm -hmm. got a donkey and his son sitting on the donkey and people are, you know, commenting on, you know, how can a young boy sit on the donkey when his old father is walking by? Yeah. So they swap over, mm -hmm. and and then the father sits on the donkey, and then people comment on, you know, how can a, a, you know an adult sit on the donkey when when a young child is walking by? Yeah, yeah. So then they both get off, and then people comment on the fact that you know how silly are you've got donkey yeah. and you're not sitting on it. Yeah. So you're never going to get all the people, people um, yeah. you know, happy with decisions you make, and I think that's why it's really important to whatever decision you make, whatever choices you make in life, they're God focused. Right. Um, you know, as long then as you God know is you're happy. Doing the right thing. Exactly. Yeah. As yeah. long as you know God is happy, then mm -hmm. you know you're sorted. Mm -hmm. You know that, you know, things will work out. It mm -hmm. may not work out the way that you want them to work out, but mm -hmm. it'll work out the best way possible mm -hmm. because you've done it with God mm -hmm. um, in the picture. Um, and then and the beauty of doing it with God in the picture is like whenever I'm you know, whenever you make a decision or whenever you try to do something, if you do it with the near that it is for the pleasure of Allah and mm -hmm. you're trying to do it the way he wants you to do it then the results really don't matter yeah the results are on and you can have confidence in, in, exactly. in, in that I so think. it's like you know when, when you when you're giving a lecture in front of people mm -hmm. as long as you ensure that you know you're doing it for the pleasure of Allah not not for the people um, and you ensure that you do it you know you prepare for it in the best possible way and you've done it the way that God wants you to do it mm -hmm. then even if everyone in it, doesn't like it, it really doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you, you've got the thawab for it, you've got the growth for it, you've got that closeness to Allah from it. Mm -hmm. So the results are really not important. And when the results aren't important, mm -hmm. then you're a lot more confident. It's when we think about us messing up mm -hmm. that breaks our confidence. Right. Um, the other thing 
maybe another perspective of, um, to look at it is how egotistic are you that you think everyone is talking about you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like the world does not revolve around you. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just from a different perspective to look at it from, you know, it's like... It's they probably even, aren't talking about you. Yeah, it's like, know. why would you think they're talking about you? Yeah. Um, and another perspective is that if they are talking about you, then you should go and thank them because on the Day of Judgment, they're going to have to take some of your sins or give you some of yeah. their good deeds. So yeah. you're sorted. It's yeah. like, you know, it's, 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 I think it's just putting it into perspective and realizing that it's, you know, I think you're making it a bigger thing than it is in your head. Um, and even if it is what you're thinking it is, it's mm. their problem, not yours. Mm. It's not your issue. Um, she talks about, he or she, we don't know who it is, um, talks about um, leaving university and getting counselling. I don't know why the two are connected yeah, in their head. Yeah, you can do both, right? Yeah, you can stay yeah. in university and still get counselling. Mm. Why would you want to leave university? Mm. And then the next, um, the next thing that she, uh, they talk about is travelling. Travelling, yeah. Now that is huge if you haven't got confidence to travel yeah, because yeah. that's way out of your comfort zone. So yeah. um, it just seems like... It's not a solution to, yeah, to anxiety. Exactly. I think it's, if you, it's, it's like, oh, maybe they're thinking if they travel, they're away from the situation, Escaping but that problems. situation will be there in, in you know, yeah. there'll be people wherever they travel to, yeah. and the same situation will arise. So it's yeah. about dealing with the issues, yeah. if there are issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's something from their childhood, whether it's lack, you know, lack of confidence because um, they themselves care too much what other people think, mm -hmm. um, even, you know, whether it's their lack of relationship with Allah mm -hmm. again you know it's that that will help their build their confidence so there's lots of different avenues that they can go down okay. and I think you know getting professional help mm -hmm. would be probably the first step in helping them trying to figure out what the issue is okay thank you very much um this next person's mm -hmm. emailed in and said um I'm really confused at this stage of my life I don't know what's wrong with me but I just want to feel free and live my life the way I want I don't particularly like the hijab I find my daily prayers a chore I feel disconnected from God and think that religion is kind of pointless. But at the same time, I do want to be close to God. But in this day and age, it's so hard. Please, can you advise? Now, that's, that's quite a, a heavy email. Mm. And I think, you know, on a personal level, I think we all go through sort of ups and downs of spirituality and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. And, and sometimes, you know, find, you know, on a personal level, hijab, I find it difficult. It's yeah. a difficult thing to do. Um, and to observe it properly in the yeah. West um, to the best of your ability when you see everyone else, you know, other people maybe not be um, observing it to the sort of level that you consider a good hijab, in, in, you know, in inverted commas. Yeah. Um, it's difficult on a day-to-day -day level um, to, to, to observe it. Um, so what would you say to this person, this, this, this girl? I would lady? actually ask a question to start off the conversation. Um, I would ask the, the person, do they enjoy studying when it's exam time mm. and having to give up, you know, going out with their friends and socializing and watching movies and so forth. Mm. That's you a good know. question, yeah. You have to do it though. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because you see the importance of the studying mm. in order to get the exams. Yeah. I think the What if you don't see the importance? What if you don't understand why? That I think that's what the problem is here. Yeah. I think the problem is that they don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. Mm. And and so they don't see the point of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it needs. You, we need to go back to basics, where you know this person needs to understand Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not from a cultural perspective, but from a religious perspective, what Islam is about and, and what these rulings are about. And it, you know, th the problem is we're taught Islam from a very fiki perspective. Mm do this, don't do this, wear hijab, pray namaz, yeah. don't drink alcohol, don't do drugs, you know, it's, yeah. and it's, it's very much, you know, do the, and, and, and do and don't, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and, and no what it does it, yeah. is it, it makes you feel, especially living in the West where everyone else is doing what you're not allowed to do, mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you're in a prison mm. and you're being stopped from doing everything and anything, yeah. uh, rather than looking at Islam as a fortress which is protecting you. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, if you were told that there's a sniper outside, who's got a bullet with your name on it and then you're told okay now you need to stay in this stay in this room mm -hmm. because if you go outside the sniper's going to get you mm -hmm. you wouldn't feel this was a prison you'd feel like it's a sanctuary you feel yeah. like because it's protecting you yeah. and that's what islam is about mm -hmm. it's about protection rather than imprisoning mm. but it's changing that mindset and yeah. the only way we can change that mindset is if we 
first and foremost, before we even look at the do's and don'ts, we need to build our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I need to understand that God created me, mm -hmm. and He created me as the soul, not the body. The body is not important, it's my soul that's important. And it's my soul that will continue on the journey when it, where, you know, once it leaves this body, it will be given another body. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding that I am my soul, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Understanding that um, I don't know anything about my soul. Yeah. I don't know how to take care of my soul. I don't know what my soul looks like. I don't know. I really don't know. The only thing I, you know, when I think about myself, I think about my body. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, it's what I, when I look in the mirror, that's who I see as Massima, but that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Because if, God forbid, I was involved in an accident and I, and I lost my limbs or I had to have plastic surgery or a facial reconstruction, mm -hmm. I would still be Massima. That's true, yeah. So my body is just a vehicle that carries mm -hmm. my soul. Mm -hmm. and my body is and, not who I am. And as you said earlier, you know, even if, for example, I understand that I need to study to do well in my exams, to be able to get a job at the end of it and support myself, even though I understand that, doesn't, you know, doesn't mean I have to like it. Yeah. You know, exactly. you still have to do it. Exactly. And that's kind of, and that's even though you important. know it's for your own yeah. good, you still have to do it because you know that it's But you're for more your willing to do it because you understand it. it. Yeah. So I think if we understand that the thick rules that are there, yeah. the wajib and haram, are not for the body, it's for the soul. For the soul yeah. So when God tells you something is wajib, it's because it's absolutely needed for the soul. Yeah. When God tells you something is haram, mm. it is absolutely detrimental to the soul. Mm. It may benefit the body, mm. but the purpose is not for the body, it's for the soul. Mm. I'll give you a simple example, fasting. Mm -hmm. Most people, um, when they're asked by non-Muslims why they fast, will answer, it gives us empathy towards those who are poor. Mm. Yes, that's one of the benefits, but it's not the purpose of fasting mm -hmm. because if it was, then the poor people wouldn't have to fast. Yeah. yeah. Because they already know how it feels to be yeah. poor. Yeah. Um, so it, it is one of the benefits. The purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, yeah. La okay. so that you may, hopefully, inshallah, if you do it properly, yeah. get taqwa. Okay. Taqwa is to do with the soul's connection to Allah. Okay. That God consciousness is not done by the body, the okay. physical body is done by the soul. Mm. So it's really important to understand that the rulings are for the soul mm -hmm. and to understand that I don't know about my soul because I live in a physical world, I will concentrate on the physical body and because mm -hmm. God knew that, he gave me these rulings to take care of my, me, to take care so of my So if you're not seeing the sort of advantages or uh, benefits, yes. they are there, yes, you just can't just see them. Yes, okay. because I have limited knowledge yeah. and my knowledge is based in the physical realm mm -hmm. with my experience of the physical realm. Okay. Whereas my soul is a spiritual entity, mm -hmm. a spiritual being, which has, you know, which is very different to the physical realm. I know when I'm hungry, I know when I'm thirsty, I know when I'm tired. And that's why God's not dictated you have to eat five a day. Mm -hmm. He's not dictated to have three litres of water or have mm -hmm. eight hours of sleep. Yeah, yeah. Because he knows I'm going to do that. Yeah. Because I know when, mm -hmm. you know when my body's hurting, when I've got, even when it's infection inside my body, which mm -hmm. I can't see, I still know because I feel the pain. Yeah. Whereas when my soul is hurting, when my soul is ill, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And do you have any sort of tips and advice of, as I said, um, when I first asked the que this question to you is, we all go through sort of peaks and troughs yeah. of spirituality or religiosity or however you want to frame it. Um, is there anything we can do to maintain sort of a minimum level of, you know, spirituality, you know, on a daily basis? Would you recommend that you should do something or not do something? Or how would you It's very important that? to make sure that the wajibats are done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But beyond that even, how would you... I think, I think beyond that will depend on, um, on your soul. Mm -hmm. And also realizing that the soul has, like you're saying, different, um, you know, um, different tastes, different um, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So just like, you know, sometimes I feel like pizza, sometimes I feel like biryani, sometimes I feel like, you know, <laughs> yeah. the soul will have different. So if, if you picked up a dua that you're reciting and you're, you know, you're just not connecting to it and you're turning the pages to see when it's finished. Yeah. You don't need to finish it. Okay. You're not connecting to it. Pick up another dua. P you know, maybe recite a Quran. Maybe do a turaqat salah. You know, do something else. Don't don't use that as an excuse not to do the extra. Okay. But realize that today your soul is not wanting that biryani. It wants pizza. So yeah. give it pizza. Give it something else. Yeah. And there are so many different mustabats that we can be doing. Yeah. Also, the realization that when I don't feel like it is probably when my soul really, really re needs it. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Because I think I remember um, listening to a lecture where um, the lecturer said something along the lines of because we go through peaks and troughs, we should make promises to ourselves to maintain sort of a minimum standard. So we obviously do our five prayers a day. Um, but beyond that, you know, let, 
there should be you know one or two or three or however many you've yeah. got time for minimum sort of prayers or du'as or acts of worship that you promise yourself no matter how low in spirituality you're feeling mm-hmm. or high you're going to do those things yeah. do you think that's a good idea or a good way of yeah. maintaining um because when you are feeling it and connecting <clears> to it is great yeah but when you're not at least you're you're doing it so that you know you're not you're not you're dropping filled, below yeah. that minimum yeah. i think i think it is important because um it, it's like exercise yeah you know, you, you, even when you don't feel like it, you'll push yourself because, you, again, you see the benefit of it yeah. and you know you, you need to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's the same sort of principle. But never, ever foregoing the wajibat. That's course, really, really yeah. important. Yeah. But also, yes, doing so, so maybe just ensuring that you connect to the Holy Quran every day. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, when you're on a high, use that, you know, that, that sort of win to sort of make the most of it and mm-hmm. actually do a lot more then a to build more, your yeah. spirituality. But when you're on a low, not giving up and realizing that this is when I still, you know, I need it more now than I would yeah. before, yeah. but um, maybe not pushing myself so that I resent it, but mm-hmm. still doing a little bit. So like maybe when I'm on a low, I'll just recite an ayah, yeah. but I'm still connecting to the Holy Quran. I'm still yeah. picking it up. I'm still reading it. Yeah. Um, and when I'm on a high, I, I recite maybe, you know, half a juice or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's about, you know, yes, doing, making sure that those connections are there, yeah. whether it's with dua, whether it's with the Quran, whether mm-hmm. it's with salah, but mm-hmm. Ensuring that no matter what happens, mm-hmm. you know, if I, I never give up on the wajibat. The that's wajibat. really, yeah. really important. Yeah. But I think here it's 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 the the beautiful thing is at the end where they say that they want to have that connection with Allah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a very nice thing. Yeah, I think that shows that their soul is pure. It is it is you know it it isn't something you know where God says that He has put locks on their hearts. It's mm-hmm. it's not it's not sort of you know lost as such. Yeah. And the fact that they want that they connection, want that, yeah. but it's a matter of they don't know how. Yeah. So understanding that you won't know how. Mm. That's where the Creator comes in. Yeah. And knowing that what He's telling you to do, He's not getting anything from it, mm. but we are. Yeah. And it, in order for us to reach our potential and our perfection, and therefore mm. we can walk into paradise. Yeah. I think that. I think it was Ayatollah Bejit maybe that said. Uh, you know, someone asked him, "Oh, how did you get to that level of spirituality?" Yeah. And he said, "All that he did was do the wajibat and stay away from the haram." Mm-hmm. And I mean, that is a very powerful statement to to just do the bare minimum, but also not do any haram, is kind of the peak of of the religion that's, in that's a way, isn't it? That's you know? all you need. But yeah. the problem is when we do it, we don't do it properly. Yeah. So, for example, yeah. we will pray for salah, but mm-hmm. our heart and mind won't be it there. Won't be there. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll. We'll stay away from haram, but we'll do it in a way that we're sliding very close to the, you know, to the yeah. line, and maybe yeah. sort of stepping across every so often. We'll wear hijab, but maybe a little bit of our hair will show, or our hands will show, or we yeah. won't wear socks. Yeah. So again, it's you know, the, the idea is to understand that Islam is about submission to the will of Allah. Yeah. And any disobedience is yeah. disobedience. Yeah. Any sin is disobedience. You mm-hmm. can't sit there and say. Oh, but this is only a small sin, mm. and this is a big sin. Mm. There is, you know, it's the, it's the biggest sin is disobedience to Allah, mm-hmm. and that's where the ego comes in, and that's where then you move away from from that sort of connection to Allah, mm-hmm. because once the ego is in play, then that mm. connection is very very difficult to maintain. Yeah. My mum always gives the example of, she says, okay, well, I'm your mother, and you love me. So if I ask you to do something, you know, whether you want to or not, out of love for me, you'll do it. So that's the same principle that we should apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where, you know, because he loves us 70 times more than our own parents, um, whether we like it or not, for his love, we should do what he's asked us to do. So that's But right. again, when your mother's asking you, she's asking you from a selfish perspective because she needs you to do that for her. Generally, no, I mean, I mean it could be yeah. anything that she's asking yeah. you to do. But generally, as yeah. human beings, we need each other, right. whereas God doesn't need exactly. us. Exactly. So that's so even more beautiful benefit, yeah. that, you know, what he's asking me to do yeah. is for my own for benefit. My own benefit. It's, yeah. it's not that he's getting anything out of it at yeah. all. So even when I ask my children to study, I'm still going to get something out of it. I'm going to get the pride that my children have you know, qualified. I know they're going to take care of me when they, mm-hmm. you know. So there's still some sort of selfish yeah. element in it. Yeah. Whereas with God, there's no selfish element mm. in it at all. Yeah, and that's, that's so that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, that, you know, a... everything he's telling me to do, <clears throat> it's for my benefit. Mm. And, you know, the sad thing is, um, I think one of the things that I've found as a counselor is, um, you know, when, when I'm counseling um, youth especially, is when something goes wrong in their life, the first thing to go is salah they'll stop their salah okay. because they feel like God has abandoned them. So why mm. should they bother with God? Yeah. And they've never, you know, it's because they don't understand that it's, they're not praying because God needs it. They're praying because they need it. Yeah. And that is the time when they need the salah the most. Mm. And to try to explain that to them at that time doesn't work. Yeah. So it's, it's really important to understand 
that these things that we're doing, which mm. are wajib, mm. are for our benefit. It's mm. for my soul. My soul absolutely needs this. And if it doesn't get this, then yeah. it's going to be ill. It's going to be, you know, damaged. It's going to be destroyed. Yeah, I was thinking, I was reflecting on something very similar just the other day, and we will move on with the next question in just a minute. But it was, um, you know, e even the mustahab acts, for example, like prolonging your sujood. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're in a hurry or you, you need, you know, you just want to sort of almost get your salah over and done with because you've got something on your mind that you need to do. And, you know, I remember there was a time where I was thinking, well, actually, if I prolong my sujood, it's not like I'm doing... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a favor by doing that. It's for my own benefit. Yeah. So I, it should have seemed like a, a chore because no one's forcing me to do it. It's more because it's for my own benefit because you know Allah has nothing to gain from it. So yeah. that's a really beautiful thing to do. And it's also realizing that yeah. what I'm rushing off to do will probably work out better if I've prolonged it, my No, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. But I think one of the most powerful <laughs> things you've said um, just now is that if we really, really realize that anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do is for our benefit alone and you know, because Allah can't benefit from it, then um, that will really give us um, a new perspective on, on our ibadah and, and sure. our worship, inshallah. So, inshallah. no, that's that's really that's really great. Thank you for that. Um, so, this next person has emailed in and said, um, uh, "Dear Masuma, my issue is that I live with a man who is somewhat volatile and ill-tempered. Our marriage is not a happy one, and this fills me with huge grief. If I do even the slightest thing wrong, he threatens to divorce." The truth is, I think he only married me to get a passport. I believe once he has that, he'll be gone and I'll be left holding the baby, literally. What should I do? This situation is affecting my ability to parent properly. Okay, so there's lots of issues here. Very First sad. of all, she talks about the fact that um, he's very volatile, but she's not given much detail on what that encompasses. So, I mean, one of the things that I would say is if there is... Um, physical abuse there, then she needs to make sure that she's not in a situation where, you know, she is in any danger or her child is in any danger. I think that's very, very important to put yeah. out there first and foremost. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no, there's no situation where it is okay for a man to hit a woman. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to mental and emotional um, abuse, it, it's uh, subjective. So it's much yeah. more difficult than to... Um, well, the fact that, you know, he threatens divorce, if, yeah, she does the slight, if she does the slightest thing wrong, I mean, that's, that's not meant, really yeah. the best way to deal with a marriage or a situation. Yeah, right? and, 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 and it may just be that, you know, they just, you know, he, he just needs to have um, that conversation, you know, she needs to have that conversation with him to make him understand that when he says that, what it feels like from her perspective mm -hmm. and how, you know, he, he says it and he moves on, but mm -hmm. she's still holding on to it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very difficult then her to, for her to have a relationship with him where you know he's constantly threatening divorce mm. Mm. so so yeah. is it just about open communication and um, that's and one of the things yeah. and again it may need to be facilitated by someone mm. because if you know if, if they're at loggerheads and they're not um, being able to talk um, with each other and, and mm. then he's very volatile and things mm. are being said it it may actually worsen the situation so it may help to have that communication with someone facilitating that mm. conversation are you, are, we often find people um, and this might be quite a generalisation, but men in particular who aren't happy to go to counselling sessions or want sort of the issues that is happening between a man and a woman to go out of the, the, the couple. How would you recommend someone um, approach their husband or, or their wife to actually, you know, if they're having facing issues like this, to actually mm -hmm. um, say to them, look, we need um, help? We can't deal with this just by exactly ourselves. How you've said it, it's like we need help, yeah. but we can't deal with it by ourselves. And yeah. it's it's not it's not your problem or my problem. It's both of us together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and actually getting them to understand that it's you know I'm not putting the blame on you. It mm -hmm. takes two people to make a marriage, and it takes two people to break a marriage. Mm -hmm. So you know, can we together go and you know seek some help, mm -hmm. some professional help? And a lot of the times, I think it's it's a confidentiality perspective that people are worried about. Yeah. So again, if you're going to a professional, that confidentiality is going to be maintained. It's I. I believe um, very strongly that it is important for you to go, as a Muslim, to go to a Muslim counsellor mm -hmm. um, because a non-Muslim counsellor will not bring God into the equation mm -hmm. um, and it's really But important. sometimes the issue isn't, I mean, I, <coughs> obviously God is in every sort of yeah. issue and problem in life and sphere of life, but sometimes it's not a religious issue in any shape or form. Sometimes it may it not be, is. but if, even, even then it's still... Uh, Marriage is about, marriage is never between a man and a woman, it's man, woman and God. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It's always the three entity, you know, in, in the marriage. Yeah. So you know, if, if you need marriage counselling, God has to be brought into the picture as well. Okay. I think that's really, really important because it's it's just that perspective. Even if it's it, even if it, you feel it's nothing to do with God, if it's nothing to do, but it is. Mm -hmm. it, as as a Muslim, your whole life revolves around God. All your choices, all your decisions, the way you behave, the way you act, even the way we go to the toilet is dictated by God. Yeah. No, I so to I totally agree. You know, but it's more, you know, I, I've. I've I've, I've seen couples where, for example, they'll go to a Muslim counsellor and, it, you know, the Muslim counsellor will say, you know, this isn't a reason to, to, to fight or get divorced. And, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sacrifice, stay together. And it's not, that's yeah. not a practical as, solution as a to the problem. I think as a counsellor, um, it is not up to um, the counsellor to give, to tell the person what they should and shouldn't do. Yeah. That has to be the person's choice. Yeah. Um, but as a Muslim counsellor, what I will do is I will give you the Hadith and the Quranic verses mm -hmm. which tell you that divorce is the thing that is the most disliked by God. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're going to go down that route, make sure you've tried all avenues, make sure you've you know, um, looked at all different options before you go down that route. And then mm -hmm. if you choose to, that is your decision. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't tell you that it's right or wrong. Yeah. The fact that it's allowed means it's, 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 okay. it's okay. You yeah. have to decide whether yeah. you know, this is the route you want to go down knowing that this is disliked by God. Mm -hmm. So it's not something you're going to lightly. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and I think most people who go down the divorce route don't go into it lightly. Of course. So, you know, it, it's not something. But I think it, it is important. I think um, when you go to someone who hasn't had any um, uh, counselling education as such, a uh, qualification or anything, then you will get people saying, well, that's not a good enough reason. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and I think that's... And I think that's why it's very, very important for, um, you know, any sort of Molanas and, and, uh, and um, you know, uh, religious scholars who will be asked advice yeah, to, to have s uh, even, even very, very yeah. little, but uh, some sort of counselling, yeah. um, not, not, not even qualification, but maybe some courses or something, oh, yeah, totally because agree, it, yeah. it really helps them to sort of, you know, just take a step back mm -hmm. and realise that, you're not living in their shoes. Yeah. You can't be giving them answers. Yeah. And even things like active listening mm -hmm. skills and things like that are really, really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think that's really, really important mm -hmm. to, to know. Um, and this person said that I think he only married me to get a passport and I believe once he okay. has that, he'll be gone. Again, that's, a, that's an assumption that they're making yeah. and, that's, and, and you, can't, you can't make assumptions like that. So again, yeah. having that conversation with him and saying, you know, how do you see this going forward? what's yeah. important to you. Mm -hmm. and, and she's saying that she'd be left with the baby literally. Mm -hmm. so obviously they've got a child in, in the relationship. Yeah. Um, whether he has married her for the passport or not, mm -hmm. um, if she walks away from the, from the marriage now, mm -hmm. or whether he walks away from the marriage later on, she'll still be left with the baby. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking of the what ifs, yeah. Live in the moment. Try to yeah. you know s sort out the moment, the, mm -hmm. the, the now, yeah. and and try to figure out you know how how you can be the best person you can be, the mm -hmm. best mother, the best wife, the best person for your own self as well. Yeah. You know your your uh, uh, your own sort of own well being is important as well. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that you said is um, you know a lot of the times men refuse to see that there's a problem mm -hmm. and so they won't go for counselling and, and I have a lot of women who will come to me uh, with issues in their marriage where their husbands refuse yeah. to have you know to even acknowledge that there's a problem mm -hmm. and my first um, question to them is do you want to stay in this marriage mm -hmm. that has to be your choice mm -hmm. don't tell me you don't have a choice because not staying in that marriage is a choice yeah. walking away is a choice you decide do you want to stay in this marriage yeah. once you have chosen that empowers you mm -hmm. so I'm not staying in this marriage because you know, I don't have a choice. I've chosen to stay in this marriage. That yeah. already empowers you. Yeah. Now it's a matter of, okay, let me help you um, to try to figure out how you can live in this marriage and be happy. Mm -hmm. And it's not about him. Yeah. You can't control what someone else does. Mm -hmm. It's about you mm -hmm. and what you're going to do to make yourself happy. Mm -hmm. So I choose not to let him mm -hmm. upset me. Mm -hmm. I choose not to get pulled into his arguments or his problems and, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a journey and it's very very difficult yeah. but it's having someone there to sort of help you guide you um in you know making the right choices and decisions mm -hmm. for your own happiness mm -hmm. thank you so much sister masama for joining us today on our show 
Um, so we've come to the end of our show today. Um, and as I said earlier, you can all, always email in uh, your questions, your problems, whether that they're at university or at work or at home, um, on our email address, which is uh, heart to heart at safiratv.com. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>